Right, hey up YouTube. Where are we? We are on Immingham Wall, Starley Wall, North Wall. Not North, well, no, not North Wall. North Wall technically is North and Point of Cleethorpes, I think. Me and Alf, don't know if you could hear him if I'm blinded. <laughs> I think he's having a bit of a nightmare. We've come here. Now, it's not quite season and the fishing reports coming from here, not great. So I'm not holding my breath for any miracles tonight. But if you ain't got bait in water, you ain't gonna catch anything, are you? So first chuck out, it's about eight-ish. We've left it a little bit late because of the, the peg that we're on. What number are we on? Can you remember, is it 20? 20, I think, yeah. Yeah, 20. We're on 20, uh, we didn't come early because I didn't expect there to be any bugger here. And we've come and there were 20 and 21 and that were it, every other bear were taken. I honestly didn't expect anybody would be here. There's no catch reports to speak of coming out of here at the moment. Uh, so yeah, as always, this is an ebb mark, so high tide is at half past nine. I don't really expect much to happen. It will be an on and off with the camera jobby because it is dark. Um, have we even got a moon tonight? Ah, so we're on new moon. To Why have we got such a high tide with a new moon then? We've got about six, I think it's about six, eight, six, nine metre tide it's supposed to be, which is pretty damn good for the wall. It's uh, pretty much where you want it to be, as far as I understand it. It is coming in pretty damn slowly though. Um, I would normally expect it, with it being only an hour or two away from high tide, I would normally expect it to be a lot higher than it currently is. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about how high the tide's actually going to get. Uh, I'm going to double check MSF in a minute. So we've just chucked out. Um, have you checked your bait, Alf? I've just chucked out, mate. You've just resent, have you? Yeah, yeah. Was there any bait left on it? Yes, plenty of bait. Ah, so fingers crossed we might not have much in the way of crabs tonight. Fingers crossed. Because uh, we're not we're not particularly wealthy with bait tonight, but we should have enough. We should have plenty. I've stuck out two rods. I've got one on a pulley panel that I tried to hit a bit of distance with and I think I fluffed the cast, but it can stay there for a bit. Um, and then I've got one on a Wessex because the clip down rigs that I bought need configuring. They need the shrink wrap doing on the clip downs uh, and I can't be bothered. So I've just sent a Wessex instead. Uh, what else am I doing? What else are we doing? Not much. It's quite a nice evening. It's dark and I'm still stood here in a t-shirt. I've got myself a packet of crisps and a bottle of pop. So I'm going to chill out and have them for 10 minutes. I might stick car forward a little bit because I don't think there's going to be my stew. But right, bikers fly up and down. If I put car out a little bit, I'll end up taking one out. Might not be a bad thing. Um, But so far, both Alf and I have both sent out and we've both kind of gone, ooh, rod tips have been moving almost straight away. But the important thing that I need to remember here um, is just how strong the undercurrent is here. Um, if you're fishing down at Cleethorpes and you normally fish with a, a three or a four ounce lead, you need to be sticking a five or a six on, ideally. Um, because the current here is very strong, which is why it fishes better on the ebb, because it'll actually pull, pull your line out a little bit. Anyway, I'm gonna have a chill out, I'm gonna have a cup of tea, uh, or a bottle of pop, or something. Um, and then when I bring these in, if there's all on, we'll have a look. But yeah, I'm back, I've had a bit of time off, I'm not going to be doing weekly videos at the moment 
Um, my new job puts me on call every other weekend. Uh, so unless I book some time off, I can't block film videos. Uh, but I'm still settling into the routine with the baby and the new job. So bear with me. I appreciate we're still growing in subs, which is brilliant. And I do appreciate those that are, that are there. You're brilliant. And a massive, massive thank you. And a massive welcome to the new ones. Uh, what do I have to say? I, know I want to have a chat with you in a little bit about a charity event that's coming up at the end of October. And I'd like to sort of ask you guys if you'd like to be... Um, virtually involved if you can't be here uh, by means of uh, a raffle but we'll, we'll talk all about that later uh, and maybe live streaming the match itself but so uh, we'll have a chat about that later on I'm hungry I've not eaten since this morning so I'm gonna have uh, a bit of snap and I'll see you in a bit <laughs> Right, okay, well, we've brought in, mine was out a lot longer than it should have been, to be fair, but we've brought in, and as suspected, at the moment, all we're doing is feeding the crabs. I appear to have forgotten how to cast, I've just had like four botch casts in a row, which, it's not fun. But all I'm doing is I'm attempting to send one out with a slightly more, slightly larger bait on and a pulley panel, and then one quite close in, to be fair. Um, that's the Wessex rig, it's quite close in. It's not a clip down, so it's pointless me trying to fling it. I'm not a power caster. But yeah, the biggest shock was, like I said, let's sit you, move you around a little bit. 
See if I can find a position where I can see my rods in, in camera. There we go. There we go. Biggest surprise was when we got here, like I said, we were expect I was completely expecting it to be not a soul here. I was expecting to have a pick of, of of locations. And for there not to be a soul here. Every bay, every bay bar two is taken. The one that we've ended up on, really, I don't like. Bay 20, I don't like. It, uh, it doesn't fish for that long. The tide doesn't come in that far on it. It's... Uh, it's a bit problematic, really. It's a little bit more snaggy than the others. Um, let's see what time we're on. Hang on. So we're at, we're 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 at Berber Day. Um, we are an hour and a half away from high tide, or an hour away from high tide, should I say? Just over an hour. Uh, and I, on a six nine tide, I'd expect the sea to be right up the sea wall, and it's it's not. And it will be on the other bays. It's just not here. Like I say, we're not fishing where I wanted to fish. I don't think, to be honest, it'd make a great deal of difference tonight. Um, but the wind's on his back, which is nice. It's a bit chilly now. It's, oh. But it's nice. Um, but it's just, tonight was more about me relearning how to fish the wall and showing Alf not how to fish the wall because I don't I'm not an experienced fisherman but showing Alf that's way out of alignment I wonder if it's not casting right what the hell's going on there I'll have to have a look at that in a minute um, showing Alf the wall um, and for him to learn a little bit about how it fishes because the one thing that catches everybody off guard like I said is just how strong the tide is here it is massively strong and it is really fast um, so it does catch a lot of people off uh, I say we'll be lucky really for flatties, eels maybe codlings, maybe whitings um, but if any of that does come it'll come on the ebb so I just wanted to check in, let you know, we're still here, we're still fishing, we're still blanking. But it's, it's preparation, today's more preparation than, uh, than anything else. So yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Oh, don't forget, press that like and subscribe. I just want to take two minutes, I just want to have a discussion with you. Um, about if I can find the post so I just want to make sure what I'm saying is right <sighs> the hell there it is about what's it called the fourth annual charity fishing match on the north wall at Grimsby it's in aid of help our wounded Royal Marines and supporting arms. Now, from what I understand, what the charity is, or what where the money from this event goes, is it goes into a pot which buys Christmas presents for the kids of veterans who either didn't make it home or are under financial distress, shall we say, or some other reason. Um, all the money goes into a pot, it gets given to a charity and they buy the Christmas presents and they take them to the children. Now I will give out more information close to the time. The charity event takes place... The rod would start twitching now, wouldn't it? <laughs> the charity event takes place... 
Let me find it again. Sorry, guys. On the 23rd of October, the fishing, I believe, starts at 18.15 till 22.15, and we meet at 16.15 to 17.15 by the gate. Now, he did actually text me a bit more information. But what I'll do is I'll get all the information and I'll put it in the description below the video. So please do go and check it out. Now, if I can, I plan on going along and recording a little bit about it, recording a little bit of the match, because I've never seen a match. I've never been to a match. Um, so I would like that experience. I'm not going to participate. Um, I may do a live broadcast from the match, perhaps at the weigh-ins or something like that, or at the price at the prize giving at the end of the night. But I'm, I'm going to have a word with George about opening up the raffle a little bit, helping me, um, I don't know how to put it, but allowing me to sell tickets via the channel one way or another. Um, I am going to set up some sort of GoFundMe or something like that, or just Said, or just a PayPal account where if you donate what shall we say £2.50 or above I will send you two box stickers and that um, £1.50 of your £2.50 donation will, will go to so £1 covers my costs for sending you the stickers and £1.50 goes to the charity or something like that I don't know I'm just kind of spitballing here, which is probably not the best thing to do actually on the video, but yeah, I'm just kind of throwing ideas about. So let me know in the comments or on the Facebook um, if it's something that you guys would be interested in helping to support. It would mean a lot to me um, and I certainly know it would mean a lot to George and the charity if we could bolster that support a little bit. I'm not too sure how, if I do a live on the night, I'm not too sure how it'll work. Uh, because I'm still under the 1,000 subs, I can't do super users and things like that. Um, but what I, once again, what I may do is open up a, a GoFundMe or something to that respect where you'll be able to, to pay in live whilst I'm streaming. Um, I, I'm told that where the match is taking place, the phone reception is really, really good. So I'm hoping to be able to go live um, during the match. So please do talk to me about this in the comments on my Facebook, wherever you can talk to me, through my emails. If you'd be interested, either in just making a donation, about participating in the match. I know spaces are very limited. Um, Huh. Uh, I know spaces are very limited if you'd be interested in coming down and seeing the match that would be excellent um, but yeah talk to me let me know if you'd be interested um, yeah how's the fishing <laughs> right how's the fishing the fishing not great <laughs> um Although I'm not sat watching other people, I've not seen anybody bring anything in yet. I've just had a quick perusal around the local Facebook groups and I've not seen any catch reports yet. Um, as I said at the start of the video, it is really early for this mark by possibly nearly a month. Um, I just wanted a refresher on how the wall fishes. Um, Alpha's never fished the wall. Um, so it kind of benefited us both to come down, have a night out. This is how us fishermen spend our Friday nights. Um, and learn, remind ourselves about the water, about how to cast into, into this site, about um, the currents and how fast they are, the, the tides and how fast they are, about the, the sort of the runoff, what the snaggy bits, all that good stuff. It would just be nice for one of us uh, to bring a fish in. I know Terry's here. I've got a feeling that next to me in Bay 21, 
might be Lee who was asking earlier about whether or not you can actually still get a van onto this road. The answer is yes. Yes, you can still get a van on here. Um, I do remind you, I do want to remind you guys though, if you come in here fishing either from afar or if you're a local, if you bring it with you, please do take it home. We are on borrowed time here on this fishing mark. Um, we've had a Scarborough warning basically saying if it gets messy and I know everybody's going to say, oh, well, it's not the fishermen, it's this, it's that, it's the other. It's everybody. Um, just take away whatever you bring. Take your lunch packets away, take your bait wrappers away, take any line hooks, take it back with you guys. Um, if you're doing a double session, you're going to be getting some worm in the morning. If, you've, if, you, if you lose a load of line or something like that happens, when you go see George at Anglers and Danglers in Grimsby, for your bait, take your used hooks, take your discarded line. He recycles it responsibly. I would like to also just mention another tackle shop, um, A&M Bait and Tackle, based out of Winterton. So if you're, uh, if you're slightly more inland like I am, and if you're thinking about starting fishing, you don't want to spend hundreds of pounds on brand new tackle, or the best service that I think they offer is they're kind of like, um, oh, what's that TV show where he goes and buys you know where he finds stuff anyway they're kind of like um magpies <laughs> no they're not like magpies that's not the right terminology i don't know but they're kind of like gear hunters um if you've got a specific something something that you're after drop them a line and if they can find it or if they've got it i mean the shop is in aladdin's cave a second hand stuff as well as new stuff. Um, sorry, I've just got my other rod tip. Just had a little twitch on it. Um, it really is an Aladdin's cave of stuff. It really, really is. Hit them up on Facebook. They do sell via Facebook and they do post a lot of stuff. Um, rods, reels, all that kind of thing. I was there this afternoon and I looked up and I just saw this row of Tilly lamps. I was like, wow. You know, they go for a lot of money on YouTube, on YouTube, on eBay. And they're selling them at £35. Now, he explained to me that they need a little bit of refurbishment. They need a little bit of work. But £35 for a Tilly Storm lamp. You know, if you know what you're doing with one and if you want one, A&M Bait and Tackle on Facebook. Based out of Winterton. Hit them up. They're a great, Rachel and Adam, a great pair um, and if they can help you they will um, so they, they seem to specialize or they do specialize more in second-hand gear so if you're just starting out you don't want to spend a wealth of money you know you can go to him and he can sort you out for a cup for 100 quid you'll be out fishing um, great fella great fella um, so like I say if you're slightly more inland do check them out and check them out on Facebook. They do list stuff. And like I say, if you've got something in particular you're after, message them because they may have it. And if they don't have it, if they find one, they'll try and remember you. Anyway, <laughs> they didn't pay me to say any of that. I just, I like to promote good businesses. Um, and they both, Anglers and Danglers out of Grimsby, an A&M Bait and Tackle out of Winston. An A&M Bait and Tackle, by the way, do course and sea. Uh, Anglers and Danglers, only sea. Uh, right, I'm gonna check these rods, guys, so I'll be back with you shortly, if there's anything on them, because they've both twitched. Well, guys, I think it's gonna be a dead short one tonight. There's absolutely nothing going on. I spoke, well, message Terry next to us. Uh, and let me give you a shout out on camera. I'll just message somebody else. Uh, Kyle. No, I'm just talking to the camera. 
who is down at the wood at the moment. Um, Ace has had a couple of knocks, but not but crabs. Teddy's had a fish finger. When I say a fish finger, I mean the fish was smaller than his finger. Um, but aside from that, there's nothing doing down here tonight. Um, I'm not sure that's off. I knew, I knew we were running a risk. Um, and I knew it wasn't going to, I knew it wasn't going to fish its head off. But I was hopeful we'd see something. Um, even if it's just a couple of whiting. Um, but so far, nothing. We've just, we've just gone over onto the ebb. The problem is the, the peg that we're on, number 20, uh, doesn't fish for very long on the ebb. So I think we're only going to get maybe another hour, unfortunately. So, yeah. So we'll see what happens. I don't think, I don't, I'm not holding my breath. Um, if I didn't have such a busy day planned tomorrow, I'd bag worm up and I'd, uh, I'd go out in the morning. But I just, there's, there's not enough hours. Uh, I can't do it, not enough time. So, yeah, for now, I've not got a great deal to say. Rods have gone stone dead silent. They're not even twitching with crab activity anymore. Although I bet if I bring them in, I bet they're stripped. Speaking of, I'm gonna get them brought in, get them changed, and get them back out. If you've not got baiting water, you can't catch, can you? So, yeah, it is what it is. It's a lovely evening, it's not cold. And I've reminded myself a lot about what the water's like down here. <laughs> And about if you want a certain peg, get down here early because uh, even now, even though it's fishing crap, there's no fishing reports coming from here. Even now, every bay was taken before we got here. We got here at six o'clock, high tide was at half nine. And every bay bar two was taken. Um, a lot of folks looking down the, down the other side there, it looks as though a lot have already packed up and gone home. Uh, and I think, let's have a quick look behind me. No, no. I was thinking that, uh, that a few that way might have already packed up and gone home as well. Um, but it looks like they're, they're sticking it out a little bit longer. Although further up there, you do get a bit longer on the ebb. Uh, and on the ebb here really is when you're gonna hit into eels, uh, flatties, but you don't get much variety on the Humber. Uh, you get you get flatties, you get cod, you get the occasional bass, but it's not really the right kind of water for it. Um, I've not heard of smoothies or doggies being pulled out here. Uh, so yeah, you see, you're limited in what you catch in here. But another month or two, and hope another month, and it should pick up, which is handy because next weekend I'm busy. The weekend after, I might be able to get out. Um, and then the weekend after that, the day of the charity event is actually the missus's uh, birthday. She said, I, I can come down and cover the charity event, which is nice of her. But I'll have to make it up to her, eh? Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get these baits changed. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> well folks I'm going to keep you rolling in a minute but I'm just going to film the outro so I'm going to do the usual please like share and subscribe but we're just laughing because literally we've released us worm into the wild we've, uh, we've chummed the water with the leftover squid packed all this rubbish away packed everything down tidied up and I says I'm just going to send out I says, I'm just going to send out one bait just while I film an outro. Because it takes two seconds to pack a rod down, doesn't it? And um, about to turn camera on, me and Alf were just chatting. About to turn camera on, uh, rod just came flying over. 
it side at car, line it half. There were no pre warning, no nothing, it just went. There's no wind, it wants the wind. Sees flat calm, it wants um, want tide. And the rod, see if we can get it on film. I don't know if the rod tip's actually showing up for you guys. It's, it's, this tip light's really dim. Yeah. But the rod's still twitching. Battery just died while I was just talking then. Sounds bloody low. I don't think there's been out firm enough to call a take. So I don't think, whatever's sniffing it, I don't think has, has, has swallowed it or, eat, or you know, is hooked up. Alf seems pretty confident that it's an eel having a nosy. I wouldn't be any of the bloody wiser, I don't know. Um, but we'll reel it in, we'll have a look. Like I so said, this is it. We've, we've, everything's gone. We've binned everything, well, not binned everything, but like I said, worms been released into wild, squids chummed water. Sea is like a bloody mill pond. In fact, if you didn't know that were water, you'd say that were, she you'd say that were sheen at mud, wouldn't you? If you didn't know it were water. Completely flat, calm. But like I said, Rod just flew over. And I wish that were an exaggeration, but it wasn't. Whatever took it was a firm tech. Yeah. Yeah, it went over and just went tight. So we'll bring it in. I've got a feeling I'm going to have to walk down with it because whatever, whatever's happened to it, my line's at almost three o'clock versus where it was. Um, so I'm going to have to walk down to make sure it doesn't snag up. So if there's a fish on it, I'll turn the camera back on and I'll see you in a sec. If not, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. That's the wrong button. So there we go, guys. Not too sure how much of this you can see or how much of me you can see. There was, uh, from the looks of this, it won't crab. It looks, for all intents and purposes, like... Well, some had a proper, proper munch. There was... Well, Alf said I wasn't going to catch some. Alf said I was going to choke it to death with the amount of worm I put on. It was one of, as Mick Owl would call it, from Rod and Pollocks, it was a proper mega worm. <laughs> it was a good... What, 15 inch? <laughs> if it had did fish, it'd have knocked them out. Um, but yeah, half of that, two thirds of that's gone. But it's not been pecked at, it's not been feathered and stripped. It's been pulled down the hook. So I definitely think there was somewhat on that. But I just don't think it would a firm, I don't think there was ever a firm actual take. I think it might have grabbed it from middle at line or something. I suppose that's the risk you take when you put a 15 inch bait on. That's not a man's 15 inch, by the way. <laughs> All right, maybe it would have been a man's 15 inch, but you know what I mean. <laughs> but that's going to be it from us, guys. All right, so it's a bit of a learning experience today, a bit of a reminding experience for me, a bit of a learning experience for, Mar for Alf. One, learning where Mark is, and two, I don't think he believed how fast tide run is. Because it, 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 it's bloody fast. It is bloody fast. <laughs> um, so you do have to be prepared to come down. When cod season kicks off, you do have to be prepared to come down here four or five, six hours before high tide for the sake of about three hours worth of fishing. I, I couldn't believe how many people were here already. I was, I was blown away by the amount of people that were here already. But the general consensus from everybody we've spoken to, not doing tonight, not doing tonight, which is, well, like I said to you, it's what I expected to be fair. Um, it is, it is, it's all learning. It's a learning experience. Yes, yeah, he struggled to start with, didn't he? He struggled to all bottom to start with. Um, he's not necessarily heavy, heavier, but you do have to use gripper. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You do definitely have to use gripper. Um, 
and I think triangle weights or pyramid weights or whatever you want to call them, I think they're just bed into mud. Um, but I don't know, I mean, I'm no expert. Undoubtedly, somebody in the comments is going to say, well, I use a watch lead. And I think, a watch, well, a watch lead would probably work, wouldn't it? No? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It gets everybody first time they come. The speed, the speed of the, of the of the tide here, you know. You look at depth at water, and you think, oh, I'll get a good six-hour session in there. Yeah. You can do if you're right down there, yeah, yeah. where that where that sluice section is, and you can walk it out a little bit. But, and I suppose we could have walked out here, because we could have gone down there a little bit. But it's too, it's dangerous. Yeah. We were expecting nearly a seven-meter tide. Um, Magic Seafish says in the end we got a 5-2 and I think it were closer to a 4. Um, the moon was very, yeah, the moon made a very late appearance. Um, which obviously has a lot to do with it, doesn't it? But um, yeah, the moon made a very, very late appearance. Um, so yeah, there was a lot against us tonight. I'm not downhearted. I achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was sort of remind myself how it fishes here. Got out of house for a few hours. I've not freeze. We've not frozen as knackers off. It is, nice. it is still nice. Um, yeah. Unlike when I were down at Bonkers and I, and I left in a foul mood, I'm not in a foul mood today. I'm all right, I'm happy. Not caught out. There's definitely been some action on rods, haven't there, but... Yeah, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. Yeah. Do you want to get your stuff lobbed in somewhere? I know you're waiting for me to shift my box to one side, aren't you? That's, that's what I said to you, that's beauty of coming here, is it's a comfy session. We could have gone somewhere like Bonkers Bank again or something like that. We weren't guaranteed to catch if we'd have gone there. And you have to spend an hour getting to Mark. That's after you've parked your car. <clears throat> Not wrong with Mark, it's a lovely Mark. And we were, I was tempted, um, I was speaking to a gent early doors, so if I can remember. I've already said I'm meant to be signing off, Anna. Anyway, I was speaking to, wasn't Kyle, is it Ian? It was Ian. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to drop him a message. He was in Cowden today, Cowden at the uh, north, just north of Hull, North Hull. And he asked if we wanted to go down. And I was tempted, but um, by the time I'd have got everything sorted, we would have been... Yeah. Which light? Oh, yeah, the light on the strut. Well, I told you to remind me, didn't I? Yeah, well, I've reminded you. <laughs> It'd be great. Right. I've closed it on it before and nearly broke strut, so it doesn't matter. It's only a gas strut. They're only a fiver. Um, and we would have gone to Cowden, to be honest, learning to learn a brand new mark or learn where a brand new mark is. But um, yeah, by the time we'd have got in gear and by the time we'd have got there, we'd have only had an hour on flood and I don't know how, how long it fishes out for. So uh, didn't risk it, didn't risk it. But give it another three or four weeks and this place should start fishing like mad. Um, I mean, God, I've never known a September like this. I was driving down to pick you up and I could smell Barbie's been lit. Yeah, yeah. You know, but last, weekend, last weekend in September and people are still having Barbies. Well, like I said to you earlier, usually this time of year, you start getting your props and 
Yeah. 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 No. As a gardener now, I'd have had my tomatoes out. I'd have been shutting back down my polytunnel. I'd have been, um, you know, I'd have been looking forward to my first leek harvest, really, because I'd have had a frost on them and or a parsnip harvest. And it's just, it's still warm. I mean, we're walking around at the side of the sea yeah, yeah. in open jackets and t-shirts. It just don't happen. Just don't happen. So, yeah, I'm saying it should pick up in three to four weeks here. If it stays this warm, it could be December by the time it starts here, and then God knows when spring run will be for cod. Or when spawning run will be for cod, because the run to spawn, they go straight up here, or down here. I, the travel straight past here, so. But it's weird, it's weird. It's like the bloody tide stopped now. It's, it's hardly moving now. But anyway, I'm putting it on full beam and it's, it's like yeah. it's hardly moving now. Yeah. Anyway, what a peculiar night. What a peculiar night. I'm going to call it there. Thanks for watching again. Yet again, no fish. I mean, we had three rods, six hooks. No, five hooks, because you were on a single, weren't you? Yeah. And not a thing to show for it. But, I think that can be said for most of the lads that are out here tonight. Yeah. Um, it's been a real tough season. It's been a real tough year for fishermen. It's not been a big fishing year. And I know there's lads that are going to go out and say, oh, I've bagged up left, right and centre. Yeah, you might have done. But if they're not in front of you, you can't catch them. Um, I've seen a few lads tonight that have recognised me. I, I apologise. I did mean to get a box sticker out to you, but when you came to see me, we were, we were trying to stop my rod from getting pulled over again. Uh, so if I see you again, do come and see me and I'll give you a box sticker. Um, hopefully also next time I'll have a snazzy new hoodie as well. So, uh, you know, if you want one, let me know and I'll see what I can do. I don't know what price will be out like that, but let me know. I'll see you later.